JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 29th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained against CAT, JPY and CHF in that order while it underperformed versus NOC, NZD, GBP, AUD and SEC. The greenback was found virtually changed against uh, the euro. The weakening of the safe havens yen and franc combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi and Aussie suggests that uh, markets turned risk on again yesterday. Indeed, major EU and US indices uh, rebounded and closed in positive territory, with the only exception being UK's FTSE 100, which uh, slid uh, 0.63%, perhaps due to a strengthening pound. However, sentiment deteriorated again during the Asian session today, with Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composite falling 1.89 and 0.63% respectively. Now, the rebound in investors' appetite during the EU and US uh, sessions may have been the result of upbeat earnings reports and the decision uh, of several trading platforms, including Ron B. Hood and, inter and Interactive Brokers, to restrict trading in several MEM stocks like GameStop that uh, searched, uh, last w that searched uh, this week. This may have allowed hedge funds uh, that we are short on uh, these stocks to reopen long positions in other stocks. With regards to the earnings of the 159 firms in the S&P 500 that reported uh, earnings so far, 83% posted results that uh, beat ma market expectations, a higher percentage than the 76% beat rate o over the past uh, four quarters. Having said all that though, Asian indices and other equity futures turned south again this morning, perhaps after Robin Hood said that it will lift some trading restrictions today. As for our view, the latest developments barely change it. As we have noted uh, yesterday, we, we still believe that the bigger picture of equities remains positive, even, uh, remains positive, even if the retreat we saw today in Asia continues for a while more, we would treat it as a part of a corrective phase. We repeat that uh, the GameStop phenomenon will likely prove to be temporary, while the COVID vaccinations around the globe, although at a slower than expected pace, may eventually allow lockdown measures to be lifted and thereby let uh, the global economy to recover. The extra loose monetary policy worldwide and the large fiscal spending package in the US may also help market sentiment to improve. This means that equities could rebound again soon, while safe havens like the yen are likely to stay under selling interest, especially against currencies which we expect to perform well in a risk on trade, the likes of Aussie and Kiwi. Now as for today's events, during the European morning, Germany's preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter is coming out, and although no forecast is available for the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate, the year-over-year year one is anticipated to have risen somewhat to minus 3.4 from minus 3.9%. In any case, bearing in mind that we already have the ZW and IFO surveys for January out, as well as the preliminary PMIs for the month, we doubt that the GDP data for the last three months of 2020 will prove a major market mover. Given that investors have already an idea of how the German economy has entered the new year, they may treat the GDP data as outdated. Later in the day, we get Canada's uh, monthly GDP for November, while from the US we have personal incomes, personal spending, 
and uh, the core PCE index uh, for uh, all for December, and the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for January. The Canadian economy is expected to have grown 0.4% month over month, the same pace as in October, while in the US, the core PC index is forecast to have ticked down to 1.3% year over year from 1.4%. Personal income is anticipated to have rebounded 0.1% month over month from minus 1.1%, while personal spending is expected to have slid 0.4% month over month, the same pace as in November. As for the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index, it is expected to have held steady at 79.2. We also have one speaker on the schedule, and this is Dallas Fed President uh, Robert Kaplan. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.